For those of you who uh, have seen our work previously, this is a riff and Richard from shadydesigns.com.au. How a beginner's guide to spit roasting. Richard, uh, it all yep. started when you were down in Melbourne and you had a fantastic experience with the, uh, the Cypriot crew. Yep, so Cypriot culture is all about the spit roast. And my, one of my best friends, George, shout out, um, down there taught me a lot about spit roasting. Um, and he, he's an interesting character. He used to wake up in the morning every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, build a fire. His wife would come home earlier than work, start it, and spit roast every meal. So he was a true spit roast warrior, still is. We, um, we had an epic fail one Australia Day, maybe two years ago. We uh, bought a basic spit roasting kit from Bunnings. It's pretty cheap, about $80. And we thought the, um, the, the, the pan itself was very close to where you were spit roasting the meat. And wow, that, that's too close. Mm. So what we did was we built some extensions with Peter in the factory and we raised where the meat would be um, cooking from because obviously you don't want it to be too close to the fire, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what we were thinking. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't end up eating until about nightfall. <laughs> if that, it was, it was totally the, disastrous. And nothing tastes worse than raw pork. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd probably go raw chicken over raw pork. <laughs> it, it was terrible. <laughs> um, we also had some angry people around us. <laughs> yeah, so, so raw pork... And probably overcommitment to the masses. I think we were cooking for about 16 people. Um, and there were 16 very hungry souls taking the taxi up to drive through Macca's at about 7.30pm. <laughs> on Australia Day. Yeah, on Australia Day. So where did we go wrong? What's, uh, what, are the, what are the secrets to getting your spit roast happening? So this is an interesting point and it's totally counterintuitive. Um, what you really need is two things. Very, very hot coals is the first. And then you need the proximity of the meat to the coals. So our first or our biggest mistake, we had plenty of coals, but we raised the meat up because we thought, you know, you want it medium rare or just done yep. um, for the pork. But it just didn't cook. Um, it was a windy day, but even still, after it four just hours, didn't cook. nothing really was happening. Yeah, nothing was happening. So, so the the key is you want to place your meat where if you hold your hand. Um, after maybe three seconds or less, yep. it burns. It, you can feel the heat. You can feel your hand burning. And that's where you want to place the meat. But what's happening to the meat? I mean, if it's so close and it's burning, well, and, is it that bad? So this is a, this is a intuitive or counterintuitive thing about spit roasting too, is the meat turns. And everyone knows that the meat turns. That's what a spit roast does. Yep. Um, but as the meat turns round, it gets scalded by the hot coals, very hot, very crispy on the outside. But as it turns round, the inside loses the heat. Yep. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't cook all the way through. So if you have it high and you miss that scalding, the meat on the inside just doesn't cook. It's not gonna happen. So it normally takes us to cook off the bone. Um, a, a whole leg of lamb would cook in literally 40 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is definitely amazing. So one quick tip is to get the fire ready um, very early and something that Richard always does when he's over at my house is we need more coals and <laughs> the Indonesian tight ass in me is like, mate, that bag cost me 30 bucks. <laughs> in they go. <laughs> so get it really uh, white hot, basically. You want the coals white and you want them really hot. And yep. the, um, uh, Richard, what kind of additions have we done to the, um, to the uh, stock kit? Um, so the base stock kit, um, for anyone out there, is very accessible, um, 80 bucks, and then you can buy um, other just spit roasting kits. And the spit roasting kits are about 20 about, bucks. Yeah, about 30 bucks. So it's 20... the motor, the skewer, and then the end parts. The end parts. Um, and the, the Bunnings, while it's a smaller spit, it can actually fit two um, spit roasting attachments on it. So you want to feed the masses, get the double spit going, all you need is a drill um, and a drill bit that cuts through metal, yep. pretty easy. It'll take you literally 15 minutes, and trust me, I'm no handyman. So, <laughs> no skill is required. This isn't a better homes and gardens job that 15 minutes later you build a house. This is very simple. So our favorite sort of combination is uh, the chicken wings. Yep, great um, Cypriot, Cypriot style chicken wings. But why chicken wings? Um, why chicken wings? Yeah. 
So chicken wings are great. Um, one, because they're cheap. So very easy to feed a lot of people. Two, they've got the skin on the outside, the fat on the outside, which turns almost like glass. And whenever someone comes around to a spit roast at your place or at my place, I say you've tried your you honey can, soy chicken wings. You that can your almost used to aim make. at people and then sort of take a squirt shot and then like. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone says I've done chicken wings before and they were pretty good. Honey soy, bit of Canton sauce. My mum used to make in the nineties. Trust me, this will revolutionise how you eat chicken. You've just got to make sure that you snip the ends of the wings off because you don't want them touching the end of the uh, barbecue so that they can rotate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of quick tips as well. So getting the fire really hot, um, we do a couple of cheap things. We chuck them on the conventional barbecue. Yep, the gas. So um, get them onto the gas, turn the gas right up, put the lid down. Everyone's got one of those gas barbecues. Don't be scared of your, your grill plate. Just put them on the grill, close, close to the flame as you can get, start them. Yep. Um, and that's good for two reasons. First, get them hot very quick. So if you just build a fire within your spit, um, the spit is built to sort of hold heat, not to start fires. Mm. So it takes a long time. Second is those fire starters are often full of chemicals. kerosene or Double chemicals, crap. and it, it tastes like crap to be honest. So get rid of them. Don't, don't buy fire starters, they're a waste of time, waste of money. All you need is a, a solid pair of garden gloves is what I use. So I get the um, heat proof garden gloves almost, and I um, put them on a uh, on a wire rack, so I've got the fire going on the conventional gas barbecue, the wire rack with the coals on top of that. I use my gloves to put them onto the um, onto the fire. Uh, maybe 20 minutes in, it, they're all ready to go. Chuck them in the pit, yeah, and then put another load onto the um, onto the gas. Get them going, chuck them in, and then with yep. a spade just turn them over. Bob's your uncle, and then you can spit roast straight away. So. Um, spit roasting, you don't want to be spit roasting all day. It only takes, as Arif said, 40 minutes for a leg of lamb. Um, probably 40 minutes um, for chicken wings as well. But you need the fire hot. Um, don't waste your time with fire starters. Get it hot, get it going. Um, yeah, party time. And in our next video, we've got a um, introduction to marinating because that's half the battle. Getting that meat, the flavor happening in there. So you want to prepare ahead. If you don't have enough time, you want to be marinating in the morning um, to be cooking in the afternoon, ideally. Um, but we go to the butchers once a week and we marinate for a whole week. And then when it's uh, barbecue time, or even if we don't have any plans for barbecue, we can just pull it out of the fridge and then um, have, a, have a bit of a party spontaneously. Yep. Once the um, barbecue cooking is over, what do you do with those leftover coals? So, great point. Arif already mentioned he's a tight ass in our previous video, I think. Um, <laughs> You need a metal bucket, um, preferably a paint tin, um, because they've got lids. If you don't have one of them, metal garbage can um, with, just a lid. Pick, with, with a lid, pick one up. When you're done on the spit, um, often you're done before the coals are done or finished burning. You can keep spit roasting if you want. Um, if not, get your shovel, get the gloves on so you don't burn yourself. Um, put them into the bucket, lid on, and it will just stop the fire. Um, word of warning, the bucket will get really hot, so no kids yep. around the bucket, um, and make sure you, your guests aren't too pissed, because falling over that bucket, it'll hurt. <laughs> so that's our introduction to spit roasting. If you've got any questions, just send us an email through th to Shady Designs. Richard, thanks again for talking spit roast with us. Yep, pleasure. And we'll see, you, we'll see you in the next episode, which is gonna be all about our next adventure, the uh, smoking barbecue. Yep, Texan style. See you later. Cheers, guys.